the door creaked open and there he was, my husband, entangled with some leggy blonde on his office sofa. My heart plummeted through the floor as the pieces slammed together. The lingering scent of flowery perfume that plagued our bedroom sheets, the hushed late-night phone calls, the sudden indifference, it all made sense now. Lila? Finn's eyes widened as he scrambled to cover his exposed skin. This isn't what it looks like. I squeezed my eyes shut, the image searing into my mind like a brand. When I reopened them, Marissa, the owner of that achingly familiar floral scent, was hastily buttoning up her silk blouse. Mrs. Reynolds, I'm so sorry, she mumbled, refusing to meet my stare. We never meant to hurt you. My jaw clenched as a tidal wave of rage overwhelmed the pit in my stomach. How dare he? After fifteen years of marriage, two beautiful children, and the endless sacrifices to build our dream life together, this was how he repaid me? Finn reached out, his expression a pathetic kaleidoscope of shame and pleading. Baby, please, let me explain. I recoiled from his grasp, vision blurring with tears. Explain what, Finn? How you've been lying to me? Betraying me? Betraying our vows? Our family? I still love you, he whispered, eyes glistening with remorse. This, this was just a mistake, a terrible lapse in judgment. A bitter laugh escaped my lips as I shook my head. Mistake? That made it sound so simple, so temporary. No, this cut far deeper, fracturing the very foundation of everything we'd built. Pivoting on my heel, I strode out, fighting the urge to collapse into uncontrollable sobs in the hallway. I needed to be strong, for our kids, if nothing else. As I reached the parking lot, my phone pinged with a new message from Derek, Finn's best friend asking if we were still on for the charity gala this weekend. The gala, just another night of plastering on fake smiles while my husband paraded around with his mistress in tow. Steadying my breath, I typed back three simple words, I need you. Within minutes, Derek's car screeched into the lot. One look at my ashen face and he understood. He pulled me into a tight embrace as the dam finally broke and the tears came flooding out. That lying son of a bitch, Derek seethed, gripping me fiercely. Don't worry, Lila. We're going to make him pay for this. I drew back, determination replacing the sorrow in my eyes. You're damn right we are. After that first wave of anguish subsided, a cold determination took its place. I refused to be the clueless, jilted wife who gets played for a fool. If Finn wanted to rip our family apart with his philandering ways, I'd ensure he paid the price. Over the next few weeks, I studied my husband like a well-researched Mark. Derek kept me updated on the latest Finn and Marissa sightings around town, the quiet lunches at that upscale bistro, the extended business trips trips that conveniently aligned with our town's art gallery openings. I gathered tidbit after tidbit of evidence, squirreling it all away in a secret file on my laptop. One night, Finn strode in well past midnight, reeking of Marissa's trendy gardenia perfume. I feigned sleep as he undressed, my cheeks burning with disgust at the audacity of his deception. "'Hey, babe, sorry I'm so late,' he whispered, planting an unwanted kiss on my forehead. "'Just had to put out some fires at the office.' I remained stone-faced, focusing on memorizing every detail to document later. The midnight stubble, the lipstick stains on his collar, the must hair, all damning proof of his indiscretions. In my weakest moments, I flirted with the idea of a clean, amicable divorce. Splitting assets down the middle, sharing custody of the kids, avoiding a nuclear fallout. But every time that floral stench wafted into my nostrils, the inferno of rage reignited. He didn't deserve amicable not after destroying our sacred vows on the altar, after lying to my face day after day. No, I needed to hit him where it hurt, expose him for the unfaithful, disloyal snake he had become, topple him from that pedestal our community had put him on. As a pillar of the local business world and a charity darling, Finn's image was his most prized asset. I would tear that facade to shreds, broadcasting his indiscretions to anyone who would listen. You should have thought about the consequences, dear husband. I muttered under my breath as he drifted off to sleep, sheets still tainted with Marissa's stench. A few mornings later, Finn sauntered into the kitchen looking refreshed in a crisp suit. He pecked me on the cheek as he did every morning, an empty ritual devoid of love. Big day at the office, important client meetings, he chirped jovially, swiping a travel mug of coffee. But I'll be home in time to take the family out for Eli's baseball game tonight, I promise. I forced a tight smile, 
masking the fury bubbling within at his blatant lies. Have a great day, honey. As soon as he was gone, I grabbed my laptop and got to work. First uploading the incriminating photos and audio recordings, then meticulously documenting each indiscretion. The green-eyed monster had been well fed, but now it was time to set the trap. With the evidence stacking up, I needed to bring more players onto my team. Zoe was the obvious first choice, my closest friend and confidante. We went way back to college, bonding over being the only non-trust fund babies in our snooty social circles. She had been by my side through the highs and lows, and I knew I could trust her with the sordid truth about Finn. Over brunch at our favorite cafe, I spilled the entire saga, holding back no details about Finn's sleazy trysts with Little Miss Art Gallery. Zoe's perfectly arched eyebrows shot up in disbelief as I unveiled the photos and recordings one by one. That, that, ugh, I can't even find a word vile enough. She shook her head in disgust. Lila, I'm so sorry. You don't deserve this. I gave her hand a squeeze. Thank you for being here for me. I need you in my corner as I, I, handle this. Zoe's eyes narrowed with determination. Say no more. That snake is going to wish he never slithered out of the garden. We'll make sure of it. With Zoe as my ride-or-die wingwoman, I felt empowered to take the next step in my plan. I reached out to an unlikely ally that could really stick it to Finn from the inside. Derek. Derek had been Finn's fraternity brother in college and his bestie ever since. I'll never forget the uneasy look on his face when I asked if we could meet up, just the two of us. He probably expected me to beg him not to hate Finn, to give their bromance another chance. Little did he know, I had a much different proposal in mind. We met up at a quiet hotel bar, and I wasted no time laying everything out, the cold hard facts, all the evidence I'd gathered, pictures, video stills, flight and hotel confirmations for their rendezvous trips. The whole enchilada. You can't be serious. Derek's eyes were saucers as he flipped through the damning dossier. I mean, I knew he was working late a lot, but I never could have imagined— I crossed my arms, letting the shock sink in. Well, now you know the truth about your supposed best friend. He's been lying to both of us, playing us as cover. Derek's chiseled jaw clenched hard as he met my stare, shame and rage swirling in his eyes. You're right. I've been an idiot, choosing not to see what was right in front of me this whole time. Leaning in, I lowered my voice to an intense whisper. Then help me make him pay, Derek. Help me take that cheating bastard down once and for all. A heavy silence hung between us as Derek weighed the implications. Finally, he gave a solemn nod. You got it. I'm in. Let's bury that lying son of a bitch. A sly smile crept across my face as I shook Derek's hand, sealing our pact. With him on the team, turning Finn's whole world upside down was about to get a whole lot easier. That night marked the beginning of the end for Finn. First, we came for his image— unleashing a strident PR campaign to turn his sterling reputation to ashes. With Zoe and Derek as my co-conspirators, the game was truly afoot. We huddled around my kitchen table like Kratz planning a covert operation, meticulously mapping out each phase of our multi-pronged attack. We start by dismantling his pristine reputation piece by piece, I declared, pulling up a list of Finn's weekly commitments— the country club golf outings, the chamber of commerce meetings, every local charity gala and fundraiser. He was woven into the very fabric of our community's social elite. Zoe's perfectly manicured nail tapped the table. A classic character assassination hurt him where he's seemingly most bulletproof. Exactly. I turned to Derek with a calculated look. Which is where you come in. As his oldest friend, you're going to be the Trojan horse that helps us infiltrate his inner circle. Derek ran a hand over his closely cropped hair, shame still flickering across his chiseled features. You know I'm in, Lila. Just tell me what you need. For starters, I need you to covertly disseminate the evidence we've gathered. The more tongues wagging, the faster those upper-crust gossipers will scramble. Zoe shot me a wicked grin. Nothing travels faster than juicy rumors in our little suburban utopia especially when they hit that sweet spot of being just scandalous enough to be true. Derek gave a solemn nod. Consider it done. I'll pick my moments to begin planting those seeds of doubt about Finn's wandering. He cleared his throat. Priorities. Brilliant. I outlined the next phase, publicly calling out Finn's infidelity at an inopportune time, when all eyes were on him. 
my own dramatic subtweet, if you will, detonating a PR nuclear bomb in plain sight of his peers and partners. We spent hours scheming, hashing out contingencies for every potential blow of retaliation from Finn, every lie or excuse he might attempt. By the time the sun dipped below the horizon, we had constructed a surgical strike plan to cut him off at every turn, leaving him outflanked and cornered by the truth. As Derek made his way out, he paused in the doorway, regret flickering in his eyes. I really am sorry, Lila, for not seeing the signs sooner, for letting my friendship cloud my judgment about what kind of man Finn really is. I placed a hand on his shoulder, offering a reassuring smile. All that matters is that you're with me now, Derek. We trusted him, loved him even, and he betrayed that, but we won't let him get away with it any longer. The weeks flew by in a whirlwind of gossip-slinging and maneuvering. Just as we'd anticipated, Derek's whispers sent tremors rippling across the community grapevine. I began fielding concerned calls and texts from fellow mom friends and wives checking in about the rumors surrounding my husband. Each time I simply responded with a knowing silence, letting their imaginations run wild. The night before the big spring charity gala, Finn slammed his briefcase down on the kitchen counter with a huff, home late as usual from another supposed business meeting. We need to talk about these rumors that are going around, Lila. His eyes were blazing with a confused rage that would have intimidated me only months ago. But not anymore. Now the fire in his stare only fanned the flames of my own fury. I arched an eyebrow coolly. Oh, and what rumors would those be, dear husband? Don't play dumb, he spat, fists clenched at his sides. The ones about me, about us, our marriage. A slow, vindicated smile spread across my lips. It was time for the knockout blow. You mean the ones about your affair, Finn? Your lies and betrayal? I shook my head slowly. What a shame that those whispers seem to be reaching the ears of everyone who really matters to you. The blood drained from his face as the magnitude of my vengeful scheme dawned on him. I pressed on, twisting the knife. The gala tomorrow night? That will just be the beginning of me raining fire on your broken kingdom, you sorry son of a bitch. Finn gaped at me in stunned silence, the veneer of control slipping from his face. For so long he'd underestimated me, just another pretty wife, content to live in blissful ignorance. But the look of shock and fear told me he finally understood the fury he had unleashed. You, you can't be serious, Lila he stammered, anger melting into pleading desperation. Think about what you're doing here. Think about the kids. Those words only stoked the fire raging inside me. How dare he try to manipulate me with our children after shattering our family with his selfish actions. I am thinking about the kids, Finn, I said through gritted teeth, about the healthy, stable home life you've deprived them of through your reprehensible choices. Before he could respond, I turned on my heel and stormed upstairs, shutting myself in the home office. Downloading the entire dossier of evidence onto a sleek USB drive, I smirked with grim satisfaction. By this time tomorrow, Finn's immaculate reputation would be nothing but ashes scattered in the wind. The spring gala was always the marquee event of the season, with every caption of local industry and high society turning out in their finest attire to virtue signal their charitable intentions. Finn lived for these glamorous evenings, soaking up the adulation and admiring glances. Tonight, however, the spotlight would incinerate him. As we stepped onto the red carpet, I could feel the weight of hundreds of judging eyes drinking in our entrance. A passing glance revealed Marissa looking radiant in a slinky emerald gown, mingling with an oblivious cluster of local artists. My fists clenched at the sight of her carefree smile. Everything okay, honey? Finn's voice was tense in my ear. You seem... off. I flashed my most brilliant, vacuous smile. Of course. Just excited for such a wonderful cause. As the event kicked into full swing, I knocked back a few glasses of liquid courage, girding myself for what was to come. When the executive director took the stage to deliver his welcome remarks, I casually made my way toward the media risers with my phone in hand. Smiling politely at the event videographer, I leaned in with a conspiratorial air. I have something pretty huge to share. Something your viewers definitely need to see. He furrowed his brow, quizzically, but handed me a spare microphone without objection. Showtime. 
Making my way through the teeming crowd, I ascended the grand staircase until I had a clear vantage point overlooking the entire ballroom. Every eye was glued to the stage, giving me the perfect opening. I cleared my throat loudly, clicking on the handheld mic. Pardon me, everyone. I'm so sorry to interrupt. A hush fell over the crowd as hundreds of heads whipped around, trying to locate the source of the intrusion. Finn's face drained of color when he recognized me perched above the masses. I'm afraid I have a rather delicate issue to address with all of you. I paused, letting the tension caramelize in the air. You see, it involves a certain person's integrity. More specifically, their integrity as a spouse. Murmurs rippled through the crowd as I dug into my clutch, retrieving the memory drive. I'll spare you all the gory details, but let's just say any respect or admiration you may hold for Finn Reynolds is misguided at best. You see, he's been lying to every single one of us, sneaking around, carrying on an affair behind my back. Finn's mouth moved wordlessly, panic and rage contorting his features as the weight of what I was doing hit him like a freight train. Lila, don't. He choked out under his breath. But it was far too late. Don't believe me? I arched an eyebrow, feeding the incriminating drive to the videographer beside me. See for yourselves. And just like that, the first bombshell detonated. Lurid photo and video evidence began playing on the enormous ballroom screens in excruciating high definition. With each new still or clip of Finn and Marissa entangled, the outraged gasps and murmurs intensified like a gathering storm. Well, husband, I glared down at the swirling vortex of scandal reveling in my revenge. I believe the floor is yours. A deafening silence fell over the ballroom as every eye locked on the incriminating videos playing in lurid high definition. I could practically hear the collective jaws dropping among the impeccably dressed crowd. Finn's face drained of all color, the panic setting in as he realized there was no spinning this, no way to pretend the indiscretions away. His walls were crumbling in real time. Oh my God! The hushed murmur from beside me drew my attention to Marissa. The haughty smile had melted from her face, replaced by a look of abject horror. Shouldering my way back through the stunned onlookers, I descended the stairs until I was standing just feet away from my disgraced husband. He opened and closed his mouth uselessly, unable to muster any coherent response. "'What's the matter, dear?' I called out loudly, voice dripping with contempt. "'Cat got your tongue?' Murmurs and gasps began rippling across the ballroom as the schmucks and social climbers absorbed the delicious scandal unfolding before them, their revered philanthropist caught in such a filthy betrayal. How utterly delectable. "'Lila, please,' Finn finally choked out, reaching out a hand imploringly. "'We can, we can work through this. Think about our family.' My eyes narrowed to slits. "'You should have thought about that before spreading your diseased legs for that.' That. I turned my withering gaze on Marissa, who shrank back with shame. Pathetic. She was nothing more than a naive pawn in all this. The drone of hushed whispers swelled as more and more partygoers absorbed the unbelievable spectacle. Reputation after reputation snuffed out by mere association. Delicious, delicious chaos. Squaring my shoulders, I turned my focus back to Finn with renewed fury. Well, don't you have anything else to say for yourself? Any other lies you'd like to vomit up? Finn worked his jaw, panic melting into indignant anger, as the reality of his exposure crystallized. You? You're going to regret this, Leela. He seethed through gritted teeth. You've gone too far. I barked out a bitter laugh. Me? I've gone too far? That's rich coming from the snake who has been lying, cheating, and betraying me every single day for God knows how long. Planting myself directly in front of him... I allowed the anguish and disgust I'd been bottling up for months to finally detonate. You killed us, Finn. You killed every single beautiful sacred thing we had. I was practically shouting now, losing myself in the furious outpouring. Our marriage, our family, our future. You torched it all by being a selfish, impulsive bastard who couldn't keep it in his pants. Hot, angry tears stung my cheeks as the weight of his deception truly hit me. Looking back... I could see the outrage and shock washing over every familiar face in the crowd, neighbors, community leaders, the snobs I'd politely smiled at every week at the club brunch, all looking on in utter disbelief at the unraveling depravity of our once enviable life. Finn drew himself up to his full height, a muscle twitching in his clenched jaw. 
For a beat, I could see the coherent words forming as his eyes blazed with fury. But apparently thinking better of it, he turned on his heel and stormed out of the ballroom, shoving his way through the clusters of whispering onlookers. I watched him go without a shred of pity or remorse. He had brought every ounce of this hell onto himself through his sickening actions. And now there would be no going back. No chance for redemption or forgiveness. Finn Reynolds was officially a pariah. As he pushed through the ballroom doors, I noticed Marissa quickly making her escape through a side entrance, face burrowed in her hands. The pawn, scurrying off of the chessboard in shame and defeat, for now the lesser of my preoccupations. Turning back to the silent, riveted ballroom audience, I lifted my chin defiantly. I hope you all enjoyed the floor show, I called out, refusing to let the hurt seep into my voice. They would not see me weak. Not ever again. Let this be a lesson. No one takes Lila Reynolds for a fool. No one. The ballroom remained eerily silent as I made my exit, clicking across the marble floor in my designer heels. No tearful apologies, no scandalized gasps, just thick, stunned quiet in the wake of the bombshell I'd detonated. Part of me had expected Finn to come storming after me, pleading and bargaining in a desperate attempt to salvage his tattered reputation. But the coward was nowhere to be seen, as I emerged from the venue into the crisp night air, drawing in a deep, steadying breath. Let him hide and lick his wounds. I was just getting started. Over the next few weeks, the shockwaves tore through our community like a hurricane. The unmistakable stench of scandal hung over every gossip brunt, cocktail party, and country club meeting like a dark cloud. Finn had once been the shining prince of our local business council, the benevolent philanthropist whose grateful smile graced the cover of every quarterly newsletter and fundraising gala program. Now his name was broadcast from every television and cover story, dragged through the mud amid tawdry allegations and outraged op-eds. Prominent CEO embroiled in cheating scandal. City's former man of the year revealed as faithless philanderer. How the town's most charitable power couple became a sordid betrayal. Clutching my morning coffee, I couldn't help but smirk at the lurid headlines. Let him wallow in the mess of his own making. I had barely gotten started on serving him his just desserts. At first, Finn employed the typical damage control tactics, a canned PR statement decrying the private matter and asking for privacy, futilely attempting to go about business as usual. But his colleagues and corporate partners were having none of it. One by one, the dominoes began to fall. Major donors pulled their contributions to his charitable initiatives. Long-time business relationships severed ties at the first whiff of impropriety and ill repute. Without fail, every call went straight to voicemail, and every email landed in my inbox, a disgraced man, finally being held accountable. Through it all, Marissa remained utterly silent, having seemingly vanished into the ether like a persistent rash after being scorched under the glaring spotlight. No more late-night meetups or hushed trysts in that ridiculous art gallery. Wherever she had slithered off to, I hoped the realization that her home-wrecking was all for naught left her sick with regret. And alone. With every passing day, Finn's attempts to claw back some semblance of stability grew more desperate and pathetic. Begging letters and rattled voicemails went ignored as I steadily executed the next phase of my master plan, the legal dismantling. Retaining a squad of the most elite, ruthless divorce attorneys Manhattan had to offer was a substantial investment. But watching them fillet Finn's hollowed-out assets, decimate his real estate holdings, and obliterate what remained of his professional reputation made every penny worth it. I'll never forget the abject look of devastation on his face as he was presented with the bind-and-gag deal my team had meticulously crafted. Custodial rights stripped away. Assets and properties divided down to the penny in my favor. The brand he'd so carefully manicured and marketed trampled to dust. This, this is insane, he sputtered, choking back what I assumed were angry tears. You're out of your damn mind, Lila. Leaning across the table, I met his fume-charged glare with a serene smile. I'm not the one who prompted this, dear husband. I'm simply delivering the karma you so deeply earned through your bottomless disrespect. With shaking hands, he grudgingly signed the last of the paperwork, sealing the complete and utter dissolution of the life we had built over fifteen years of marriage. I watched on in cold silence, relishing every agonizing second. 
I hope it was worth it, Finn. I said evenly as I rose to leave, letting the full gravity of his consequences hang in the air. I really do. Outside the car waiting to whisk me off to my next destination. A new home in the heart of the city. A sprawling penthouse where I could properly begin my next chapter of life. One without the stench of his betrayal poisoning the air. As I slipped into the back seat, I caught a final glimpse of Finn through the tinted windows, shoulders sagged in deected defeat, haggard face in his hands as the crushing realization that he had lost absolutely everything sank in. A small, satisfied smile crept across my lips. "'Consider that a down payment, my dear,' I murmured, turning my sights toward the glistening skyline as the car pulled away. "'So much more karma still remains.' My new penthouse in the heart of Manhattan could hardly have been more perfect. A sprawling airy with walls of gleaming glass that bathed the loft in a warm, welcoming glow. Out on the massive terrace, I savored a fresh-brewed coffee while drinking in the iconic skyline view, feeling a sense of peace and renewal wash over me. After scorching every last inch of Finn's carefully curated existence to the ground, leaving him a shattered, empty husk of his former self, I had reclaimed total control. Of my life, my assets, my future. With the divorce finalized and the ruthless legal battalion I'd assembled officially standing down, it was time to begin plotting out this new chapter on my own terms. The terms of a woman reborn in the ashes of betrayal. First order of business? Ensuring my children's stability and well-being was accounted for, something their degenerate father had clearly deprioritized through his selfish spiral. While the custody agreement prevented me from fully extracting them from Finn's orbit, I quickly took steps to minimize their exposure to his toxicity. A fresh start at a prestigious private school, top-tier therapists to help them process the traumatic upheaval, and generous trust funds secured to safeguard their futures, all paid for by the deep gash I'd carved out of Finn's net worth. He could cry financial hardship all he wanted— but not a single penny would be spared when it came to giving Eli and Jenna the secure life he'd deprived them of. With that squared away, I turned my attention back to my legacy, the wildly successful sustainable skincare brand I'd poured my heart and soul into founding. While Finn's indiscretions raged in the background, I'd strategically leveraged the divorce settlement to buy out our remaining investors and take the company entirely woman-owned and led. The new office space was nothing short of stunning, an open, airy loft suffused with lush greenery and natural light that instantly energized the staff. A far cry from the sleek but sterile high-rise that previously housed my passion project. Welcome to the rebirth, everyone. I called out to the buzzing room of employees. Our sustainable oasis in the heart of the concrete jungle. A chorus of cheers and applause rang out across the room as I gestured for them to gather around, so many brilliant, hard-working people who had picked up the strenuous slack during my vindictive campaign against Finn. Now it was time to unveil their well-earned rewards. I hope you all had a chance to review the substantial bonus and equity packages waiting on your desks, I said with a warm smile. Consider that just my first gesture of gratitude for your unwavering commitment and support. Another wave of raucous cheers and applause. These were my people the ones who had ground away in dedicated resilience, buoyed by their belief in me and our mission. Not like that rat Finn, who had gleefully bilked and misled our team along with the rest of his sham life. There was still plenty of work to be done in solidifying my brand's future, building out our philanthropic impact, and cementing my role as a leading voice in sustainable business and wellness. But for the first time in a long time, I felt that intoxicating thrill of optimism and drive coursing through me. As the party wound down later that evening, Zoe pulled me aside with two glasses of crisp rose in hand. Here's to new beginnings, babe, she said with a warm smile, to rising like a damn phoenix from all of the ashes that cheating snake tried to bury you in. I accepted the glass with a grateful smile. I couldn't have done it without you by my side, Z. You gave me the strength to burn it all down. We clinked our glasses together and I savored the bright, vibrant notes of the wine. A toast to reclaimed power and self-worth. To unyielding defiance in the face of a man's soulless betrayal. Over the days and weeks that followed, fleeting updates on Finn's miserable new circumstances would occasionally trickle in, 
dismissals from high-profile boards, shuttering of his business ventures one by one, a repossessed Maserati here or an abandoned vacation property there. Like a riptide, the privileged life he'd so cavalierly demolished washed further and further away from his grasp. Through it all, I never spoke a word about the implosion I'd orchestrated, never gloated or reveled in his downward spiral. As the ancient proverb goes, to get revenge is to dig two graves. Mine was refilled, refortified. His remained open and unfinished. Several months after the dust had settled, I was buckling the kids into the back seat of my Range Rover when my phone chimed with a new email notification. Assuming it was just the latest update from one of my team members, I swiped it open disinterestedly. The subject line stopped me dead in my tracks. I surrender. The message body was mercifully brief in Finn's unmistakable terse scrawl. You won. I have nothing left to fight with or for. It's all yours. Numb satisfaction washed over me as I took in the full weight of the concession the man who had vowed eternal fidelity had just confessed. Every last shred of revenge of karmic justice served. It had all led to this ultimate broken admission. The kids were chattering happily in the back seat, oblivious to the magnitude of the moment. I couldn't help but glance over at them and smile. For them, I had ensured their father's transgressions hadn't completely shattered their world. Hey, kiddos, what do you say we blow this popsicle stand? I called out, firing off a final email response. Sure thing, Mom. Where are we going? Pocketing my phone, I turned the key in the ignition and threw the car into drive. Anywhere, I replied with a contented smile. Anywhere but here. The end.